Welcome back to No Man's Sky. I am Rollin, and today we're going to be looking at some different bases in No Man's Sky. I'm going to show you three bases in this video that I put together, four bases from different people in the community that have been building bases in these weekly events. This game engine has the uh, tendency to smack the poop out of you if you build a base too big, and so I figured that out the hard way. I'll show you what is a base that is too big, in fact a couple examples of that, and then a base that's more appropriately sized that will render in all the way. So if you're like me and it bothers you that not everything renders in on your base, you might want to check out this episode just to give yourself some ideas in your own base building. There's a lot more to the game than just blowing up giant walkers and getting smacked by aliens, so... If you are interested in uh, building some bases or seeing what people are up to in No Man's Sky, this would be a great episode for you to check out. Uh, thanks very much for your patience, too. I've been gone for a little bit, but we're getting back into it here for the holiday season. So come along and let's check out the bases of No Man's Sky. Welcome to my home world, or one of my many home worlds of Adoga. And uh, in this base I'm going to be showing you now, this is an example of one that's a little bit too large. Uh, the reason I say that is not all the resources load in when you come into the area without you getting super close to it. Like right there, you see the ramp and the lights load in. Um, there's a lot of structures here, and I'm also building this off an existing trade, ter uh, trade base, which is something I recommend. It gives you extra uh, platforms and a trading station and a lot of things you'd have to build. Uh, so take advantage of some of the in-game resources. If you find a base, you find a nice area like I'm uh, at right now, uh, go ahead and set your base up there and just add buildings around it. Um, got a couple farms here too, and I think farms is something that really slows down uh, the ability to load things in. So these are just part of it. I actually have some really big farms I'll be showing you a little bit underneath the base uh, here, underneath the training platform. So this building I'm in now is the administrative building, I call it. Uh, so I got all the different trading uh, terminals, your gun trading terminal. And then, of course, we got our farms down there to see all the uh, plants popping in as they dance around. Uh, so definitely a little bit too big. On the far side over there, we're going to go check out the first building I've stuck on this trade platform. Uh, when I first started playing with the uh, new expansion, the uh, next expansion, there's a lot of things I hadn't uh, researched yet. So this was just the wood panel building I built that I've kind of turned into like a little pseudo restaurant. Got a uh, area over here to craft, and then again, it has a nice lookout here over the side. Uh, a lot of superheated storms on this planet, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty nice, especially with the changes they made to the game recently where uh, you can stay outside a little longer and the storms don't happen as frequently. I uh, built a lot of ramps to the different platforms, um, and the way that these trading platforms are too, behind the base and on each of the corners is really uh, like a really good area to uh, build something big. So here's uh, one of the more unfinished structures I have. I was going to turn this into a residence hall, but then I noticed that as things weren't loading in quick enough, uh, things like a windows and all that load in right around your immediate area, uh, I was kind of scaling back on working on this base as much as some of the other ones that I've started. You saw right there, like one of the windows loading in. Uh, but I do like this area, and uh, Adoga is kind of my experimental uh, world, I guess you could call it, where I try some of the new things. And uh, so I'll be showing you another couple bases here on Adoga, too, in a little later. Uh, so we got our Exocraft terminal over here on the back and our new cycle. And then I stuck a whim farm here in the center, so we had kind of like an atrium in the middle. Uh, along with uh, that radar dish is new into No Man's Sky that lets you basically summon your crafts anywhere on the planet. On any planet you stick that radar dish. So now you can just build one thing and get any of your exo crafts. Got my main vault room here. Uh, on this one I put them all in lights and uh, stuck numbers in all of them. And that's kind of what I like to do. Then I got my garages. And uh, we got our one of our bigger farms here too. But this is the main garage. Of course housing the largest of my exo crafts. And then we got some of our hazard suit protections, all that. We can craft on here too. So up here on the top, we've got our uh, weapons rack, and we got some of our places to uh, craft and smith and all that kind of stuff, different parts. And uh, then out here, I'll show you, we got a couple more garages. We've got our main exocraft, the fast one. Then I got a, my huge one in the center, and the hovercraft over here on the side. In the back too, um, I got some of my farms. So we got the glass farm, 
and some of the different things here as we dance our way through the plants. Um, I think it says Frost Ward or something like that. Oh, these are star bulbs. Frost Ward's on the other side. Uh, so I actually set this up to build different circuit boards and stuff that sell for quite a lot. Uh, but they're housed in different areas, but it's also a good place for glass farming. And then I got the carbon and all that too to feed the different plants if I want to speed things up a little bit. So back here is some more. There's our frost uh, crystals. So this is where I usually come to uh, get the glass going when I need that. And uh, then out here on the side, this goes back to the administrative building underneath. So you see I got a lot of area underneath the uh, trading posts that I've utilized. And that links back into that main building. One of the things I like too is I uh, made these staircases as ladders in this game are kind of a pain in the butt to get on and off unless you've had a little practice uh, know what to do as far as like side strafing and then hitting the uh, release button. It's a little more difficult. So the staircases are nice and I got them winding both ways too. And uh, we'll go up here to the top and check out some of the uh, extra landing pads I built and I'm uh, probably going to fill it out, uh, finish out this uh, area on the top at least. On the top there I got uh, my control tower which I'll probably finish that out. Uh, something to control all the traffic in and out. Anyway, that's my first base. One a little bit too big here on Adoga. Now we're going to go to my next uh, avatar and show you one that's a little bit more appropriately sized before we check out some more bases here on Adoga and some of the other guys' bases as well. Alright, so this is my other avatar. I call him Grambler, little Gek. He's a cute little dude, isn't he? But uh, he's got a much more appropriately sized base and one that loads in all the way. So this will give you a scope of what it looks like out here on the bottom. I didn't make a huge ass garage and farm. I just have all the different pads except for the underwater one, which we will be checking that out here in a little bit too. Um, and then I got that dish again so I can port it into crafts anywhere. The actual base is here in the back. I just have two uh, big towers, but also some patios off the back of it. And then I got a vault room onto the side, which we'll be checking out. The patios on the back, I just used the bases or the foundations for some of the circular things and then deleted the top on it and then created some poles to make it look kind of cool looking. And uh, you could stick some lard furniture out here, I suppose. I just wanted something to overlook uh, the scenery as this is kind of a cool red planet uh, that I like. It's nighttime now. I got uh, one of those new statues from the weekly events and lit it up outside. And then we'll go in and give you a little base tour of what I've done on the inside. We've got our Exocraft merchant here. Uh, in the center and then we're going to be checking out the vault room. Now this one I didn't light up and add so many small details to it to kind of help everything load in right when you get there. And it's worked out pretty good. So it's basically the same sort of vault room as the other but this time uh, I didn't put the lights on. Still got them kind of on the raised small platforms and I still got the ramps up to it with the doors. The doors thing is actually an idea one of my friends gave to me. I think I can give credit that to Jer. I thought it looked pretty good so I've been using that. And then here I got the uh, new little droid, so a little hangout zone, I guess, for people who are coming in off the Exocrafts. And now let's go up the ladder here. we got a bunch of different rooms. Some of them aren't finished out yet, but uh, we do have our ability to change our character's appearance there on our, uh, I don't know what you call that, some kind of hollow terminal. And then I made a bedroom here. This is uh, kind of neat. You can uh, divide up some of these circular rooms with these inner wall panels. So like on one side, I got a little living room and the bedroom on the back side. We've got some places uh, there for clothes and all that sort of thing. Uh, up here on top, we have some of the other terminals. So I got the uh, gardener guy and all his different plants out here on the front in some of the domes. So we do still have some glass farms and stuff like that if we need some of these exotics or just want to make some extra cash, we can uh, pick those and sell them. Over here, we got the uh, science terminal and a pretty nice vantage point too out over the lakes around here. So science terminal, left it a little more roomy, got our desks and stuff. And uh, then we got our main construction terminal here all the way by, and then that ramp goes out there to one of the trading post landing pads. Like I said, um, you know, starting your base on one of these trade terminals is a great way to give yourself a little advantage as you'll have a market right away and you'll have uh, seven places to land, or no more eight than that. I guess it's eight places to land immediately without having to add anything to it. Build a little stairway down onto the deck, and so here we are, uh, out on the trading terminal. But anyway, that worked out really nicely. It's like the perfect size. All right, we're back on Adoga now with my uh, main avatar, Rollin. And uh, now I'm going to be showing you one of the brand new underwater bases. They've added some new components since week seven, I guess it was. And so now you can build some pretty cool looking stuff underneath the ocean. Uh, so let's jump inside here real quick. This is actually on the opposite side of Adoga from that base that I considered too large. 
which is still my main base. Hopefully that they uh, just get the assets where they load in a little smoother so I can do it. On this one, you see I kind of have a carpet on the ground because there's a little water that uh, is here as we're like perfectly at sea level. So the water somehow came through. So I have this like carpet hatch. <laughs> so that's a little bit of a bug, but it works. And then uh, we're going to crawl down here and I'll show you some of the new uh, circular and different shaped rooms they have. So this one is uh, actually underwater uh, model. And uh, I like the way it is. It's got a lot bigger windows, and uh, with fish coming and stuff, it's a lot easier to see. And there's lots of them here on Adoga uh, to show off. And I'll be showing you some more of the new stuff outside they've added to the Abyss uh, expansion, which I'm a big fan of. I really am a big fan of this game in total. I like how the developers continue to work on it and uh, make this game really uh, a lot better than it was when it was released. And I was um, not really as jaded as a lot of people were when this game came out. I thought it was still pretty neat, but now it's uh, awesome. So here's some of the uh, main rooms I have under uh, my undersea base. It's kind of my undersea science station, I think I call it. Got a beacon, got our main habitat room, and then we got these moon pools here with lockers around uh, for people to come in and dive out and gather resources and stuff. So let's do that real quick to show you what that's about. Um, and I got another couple places to enter into this uh, like L-shaped structure. And you can uh, mine a bunch of the new resources. So we got chlorine down here, we got salts, uh, a lot of different sea animals and stuff too we'll be checking out. All right, let's come over here. We got ourselves um, our teleporter, and uh, I've thrown a couple of statues. This one right here, the Rattlespine, is brand new from week eight. Uh, but they've added a lot of things you can collect now out of the world and bring them in and turn them into like a little statue-esque. So I got uh, my statue of Rollin and my uh, Grambler statue there. Some of these new modules, like these uh, different hallways and stuff, I like them a lot, and I think these are only available underwater. I haven't been able to use these on the regular above ground basis, but I dig them a lot. You can see everything, and uh, for how beautiful this game is, I would use these on my above ground basis a lot more too, if we could do that, but right now we can't. So as you can see, we got a lot of fish swarming through here, and every once in a while we'll get one like stuck inside my base. <laughs> so like they clip through. But uh, for the most part, this is pretty done pretty well. So I'm back up here on the landing pads above water again. I'm going to show you some of these other things that uh, my expansive uh, hallways here have connected to. Over here, uh, I just have a uh, weapons merchant and then some farms for oxygen too. As uh, going deep diving, we'll use up a lot of oxygen. So I stuck a couple of those on there. Stuck a little cornfield, uh, which is just more cosmetic uh, on the far side too. So there's not a lot going on that little island. And then we got a little area to rest. We got some storage here underneath. If you need to uh, get some extra stuff, you can go over there and uh, they spawn in some items every once in a while. And then we got our Exocraft, or not Exocraft, we got our weapons terminal here behind me. Now I haven't actually ported in any of the vendors into the space. It's just kind of uh, just a retreat. Uh, but if I wanted to, I can make this my full base as I have one of each of the different uh, terminals here. Here's a science one. And then down below I have another place where uh, we can crawl down and go out and uh, explore the bottom of the ocean here on Adoga. So we'll do that again. We got that weird kind of glitch with a little bit of water uh, when we go through it. It's like a little water door. Just to let you know you're going below sea level. And then we got more tubing here. You can see out over there is my uh, main base. And uh, I guess we're going to have to go check out that uh, new submarine exocraft here in a little bit too. I'll show you what that's like. So on this one, this to change it up, I use the regular side door, but I still got lockers. So this is basically a place to jump out and grab some more resources and have another entry into uh, my main base. So we'll go and use our rocket pack, something new they've added to underwater, so you can get around a lot faster than just swimming around at a slow snail's pace. I'm liking that, so big thumbs up there. They keep kind of making things better and better. And uh, now let's go check out the new uh, submarine exocraft to show you that. So I've been happy with the size of this underwater base too. I haven't had any loading in issues. Uh, of course, I'm not uh, using any of the in-game resources, uh, but there is a lot of stuff to load in here if you consider all the different sea life and the different uh, textures and stuff they've added to the oceans, which I like a lot. And there's still stuff I'm discovering, like I've never seen this thing before. But we'll come in here and uh, looks like we can probably harvest that. We've got salt here at least. So all kinds of different sea creatures and halide cores. I don't know what a lot of this actually does, but I think some of it is for new crafting recipes and probably for things that you can make uh, cosmetically in your base. Shit! <laughs> oh, whoa, okay. I had seen that in some of the uh, other playthroughs, and I didn't realize that that's on all the worlds. I thought we didn't have giant sea creatures, but I guess I was wrong. 
Awesome. So if you pick those, you get a giant sea monster that will come and eat your face. All right. He's pretty close to my base. So I'm just going to take him out real quick. I got a pretty good gun recently. I uh, did a little bit of hunting, and I uh, have some pretty awesome ships too, but I'm, I'm going to not show those off in this episode. We're just going to look more at the bases. Wow, this thing is super tough. Uh-oh. All right. He's getting up on me, so I'm going to back up a little bit. Reload this thing. Go away! Look behind you or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wow. He blows up. All right. Hey, that's pretty cool. Anyway, back to the base. Um, that's pretty much everything. It's just uh, I got a bunch of different uh, rooms here with couches and stuff for people who uh, come in and want to do some underwater exploring with me on a doga. All right, now we're going to be looking at some uh, different bases from other players. So this is one of the weekly events. I think this is week five or six. And I just like the way this guy used some of the smaller modules in his base. And it all loaded in pretty well, too. I didn't really notice uh, any re assets being loaded in as I walked around the base. Uh, and I like the whole that he just used some of the basic shapes here and just colored them to make things look a little bit better. Uh, it's got some bedrooms, nice desk, and some of the new decorations like the globe and this cube, which are uh, really super cool. You can get these from collecting uh, some of the new tokens and turning them in for the weekly events. And uh, then generous to generous enough to put in some different resources if you need to sell. Now here's something really cool. I really like what he did with his staircases. Uh, on these small modules. Might have to try something like this, but the different levels up on top of this uh, giant structure uh, makes it look really nice. Looks like we've got a place to teleport in later, so I went ahead and saved that. But let me show you the staircase. And this must have taken him a long time to do, too. So, yeah, he's got all these glass domes, and this must have taken a lot of resources for sure. This goes down, what, I don't know, six or seven stories? It's pretty tall. It's supposed to have taken quite a while to do. And I'll show you what it looks like on the outside here, too. So he did a good job. I like the colors, too, he chose. Kind of goes with the uh, purplish world here. And look how high that is. That is pretty cool. And then up top, we got some landing pads and some different stuff, too. We'll go ahead and fly up there in a second. It's like something's landing in right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and take it, make it back to the top and see how quick. Hopefully, we can get all the way up there with our uh, jetpack. I have a lot of modules installed on this pretty much fully tricked out so I'm pretty confident we'll be able to get to the top but it's a long haul one thing I found too is if you use the side of these walls you can get up a little bit quicker and it doesn't use as much fuel so that's a little trick for you yeah so uh, under side here he's got some of the new plants put in he's got that same corn husk looking thing I have and then we have our different statue monument this one's uh, the atlas which I like it's got that animation inside Anyway, that's uh, one of these guys' giant bases, uh, and I think this is like week five or six. That was right before we got the uh, Abyss expansion, so whatever week that was. All right, let's go and check out another couple bases from uh, some other players here real quick. All right, here's another one on the same world. Um, I like what this guy did with his design. He's using, instead of the small module boxes, some of the regular panels and just creating his own structure. It looks like he made the exterior on this first and then went in and kind of filled it in which I guess is one interesting method you could use um, put a lot of landing pads on the outside but I'll say the outside looks awesome and then he's using uh, some of the different screens here let's, look, let's walk around one time and see what he's got on the outside mostly just different ports threw some couches down which is uh, was cool kind of inviting I guess if you're inviting your friends over to check out your base and uh, let's let's see what we got on the next floor Okay, a bunch of stairs. Looks like maybe a larger room here. Yep, and he's got some of the new droids too. These on a lot of glass on the inside. And then he's got one of the large refiners next to him. This is right by the portal, so there's a lot of uh, people's comments stuck down by the portal. And let's see. One thing I wish uh, we could do too is delete uh, people's comments. For right now, they're permanent. But, uh, you know, if you have a base and somebody's stuck comments on your base, it's kind of annoying having to see them every time. You walk in, especially if it's something from a long time ago. So maybe they'll add that into the future. Let's come up here on top, and okay, he's got himself a trophy room. It's a lot of the new stuff they've added to the game. Looks like he even's got some of the uh, bronze ones, which I haven't unlocked yet. Got the blob. He's got the different uh, explorers. Got our little get guy. All right, and up here on top, 
Let's see what we have. Well, we kind of have a uh, patio area to overlook. And another room. I like these tables with the lights that pop out of them. And I haven't used these plants yet. I think I have them unlocked, but I just haven't found a good place to uh, stick them on a patio. But that's pretty neat. And then looks like on the inside here, it's got another, maybe a bedroom or something like that. I see some beds in here. And a signal booster. This will show you kind of where we're at in the world. Let's go ahead and I'll show you how close we are to the actual portal if you are have a access to the week 5 area. You can see where the portal is there to the uh, southeast or yeah, southeast. Anyway, I was pretty impressed with that base. I like it and uh, he did a good job and it actually loads in pretty well too for being so huge. Um, I saw there's a little area down below, but I think we're going to go and jump to the next one as I didn't see a way to uh, sneak into the stem or the base of the base. The base of the base. Oh, we got some other flying bases over there. Now that one looked like it was loading in a little bit. Of course, there's so many of them right next to each other from these weekly events that it's not surprising. All right, here we go to a brand new one. This is from week eight and uh, one of the new metallurgic worlds or metallurgic or something like that. Uh, it's got some interesting new animals and uh, new effects and stuff here too. Look at these, they're pretty cool looking. We'll take a land here by Target Bob's base and we'll check that out real quick. I saw him running around on the uh, planet's surface. Of course, we're in different instances, so right now, uh, if you're in different instances of the game, you see us as little orbs of light. So uh, you'll see his player character. What is this? Got some sort of floating energy ball. So they've added a bunch of new animal types too. Uh, that one's, I guess, made out of energy. And as you see, too, we got a lot of different structures, or I guess they're calling them plants here, too, on the planet's surface. Looks like pieces of some kind of mechanical thing, though. Pretty cool looking. So this is a plant, and uh, pays pretty well, 61,931. So let's head up here to Target Bob's base and see what he's done. He's kind of got a uh, elevated platform, it looks like. And uh, interesting looking pattern. I like his uh, entryway here. This is nice with the uh, three-way staircase. Welcome! Glass farm inside. Awesome. Alright, who doesn't like a glass farm? And uh, we got a place to save here. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look inside and see what he's done. So I like how he has this wraparound hallway on his uh, inner module. And it's just architecturally interesting. And it's stuck some of the new resources in the center of each of the terminals. We've got a trade station. That looks really good. And let's see in here. Man, that looks awesome. This guy's like some kind of interior designer or something like that. Oh, I didn't know we could take these. Looks like we got some new assets you can store in your base. And unfortunately, I can't collect it off one that's already been put into someone else's. But that'd be nice if it could. I already got these from the other week. Those are underwater. But I guess we can also stick them in the center of the pool. That's interesting to know. And then I saw a little bit of glass in there. But he's got all kinds of different stuff. And it's a glass farm. Got some lights. Anyway, that's it. It's just kind of a uh, small base, but I like the way he put it together. It looks really nice. And now for our final base, we're going to check out a, uh, another base that I think is just a little bit too big. And it's another player-made base. I've actually seen this one at most of the weekly events, so I'm not sure if they're picking it up and porting it at each of the new weekly locations or if they're just rebuilding it every time. But it's uh, huge, and as you can see, some of the assets loading in in the windows and on top, the flag posts and stuff like that. Um, this is a little too big. So this is using, uh, looks like nine different towers that are for, uh, Stories Hall and then connected on top with a lot of terminals. But with all the assets in the area too, right around the portal, uh, this is what I would consider a little bit too big, but awesome still. Um, so um, if it doesn't bother you to have things, uh, loading it around you, then this is just fine. But let's take a look inside and see what he's done. He's got a lot of different, uh, terminals and, uh, some of the cosmetic stuff that you see in a lot of the bases for couches and we've got a, tre a nice uh, statue room up here looks like it's done a good job on it and then uh, in between each of these different modules we have a lot of places to land so some pads place to change your appearance uh, and we'll probably have some resource farms and stuff in here too I did see a uh, portal down below 
I do love these big ambitious bases. The problem is it just doesn't work for everybody's graphics card and PC. So if you're having people over to check out your stuff and they have to wait to load in uh, half of your base, it kind of sucks for everybody. But uh, hopefully this has given you guys some good idea on uh, what is a little bit too big and what works well for uh, people in No Man's Sky. And uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, thumbs up and give me a like on this video and I appreciate that very much. And I plan to do another crossout video here real soon, and maybe one too on Robocraft Infinity. Uh, so anyway, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.